The Labour MP for Brent Central, John Butler, joining us from our Westminster studio. Your responsi responsibility as well, Miss Butler? Yeah, it is, and it's, it's cool. I accept that responsibility. I'm glad I nominated Jeremy. I think it was our duty as MPs to make sure that we had as many different people on the list as possible so that we could have the widest possible debate in the party. You'd like him to win? Um, I don't think that Jeremy will win. Um, I nominated that Jeremy. That was my question with respect. Yes, but I'm answering. Uh, no, you're not. So my what question is, no, no, my question is, do you want him to win? Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm, and I'm going to answer you, Kay. Just calm down. So what I'm saying is, I nominated Jeremy. I'm happy that I nominated him. I don't think he will win. The person that I'd like to win would be Andy. Do you want him to win? I'd like Andy Burnham to win because I think Andy is the leader that we need to take the party forward and to actually unite the party. So I'd like Andy Burnham to win. So what was the point in voting for Jeremy Corbyn to be on the ballot paper in the first place? Because, as I said right at the beginning, it was our responsibilities as MPs to make sure we had the widest possible debate as possible. It was only MPs that were nominating the candidates. So it was up to MPs to say, OK, these are the people that we have to choose from as a party. And I think it's important. Jeremy has an important role to play within the Labour Party and make sure that we define who we are. And Jeremy has a pivotal role in that. And he is doing an amazing job in making sure that we have a debate covering all aspects of the Labour Party. And what he's doing is he's making sure that we don't forget our past as a Labour Party, but we redefine and make sure we secure our brand, if you like, as a party. And I respect Jeremy 100%. What's the point of putting somebody on the ballot paper if you don't want them to win? Oh, should I repeat myself? OK. So what I'm saying is that it was our responsibility as MPs to make sure that we had as many people as possible. We could have just nominated two people and had a debate amongst two people. That wouldn't have taken into the spectrum of, the, of our party. And it's great and it's important that Jeremy's on the list so that we have a widest possible debate. So it's good that that's... I mean, I don't know. You say that politicians don't answer the question. I've answered it three times and then you're asking me the same question again. It's important. I'm pleased. I don't regret nominating Jeremy. Um, if he wins, I'm sure that he will make sure that we mould uh, the party in terms of where we are. And then I'm sure he'll do what's right. That's Jeremy. Jeremy is cool. Jeremy's a cool guy and he knows what he's doing and he knows what he's saying. He wants to be on the Foreign Select Committee. That's where his heart lies. That's what he really wants to do. And I think he's got an important role to play in that as well. Tony Blair doesn't agree and neither, it would seem, does Yvette Cooper who says that she wouldn't be in, his shadow, in her shadow cabinet. OK, well, that's Tony Blair and Yvette Cooper. But Andy says that Jeremy would be welcome in his shadow no, cabinet. Didn't. So, no, he didn't. He said so, he would certainly not have him as Chancellor, shadow Chancellor. But he said, he, he said, Andy Burnham said that he would have Jeremy in his shadow cabinet. Don't tell me that he didn't say it because he, said, he did. He said, What's wrong with you? <laughs> he said on he the said telly, he said, he said on the telly on Sunday uh, on the Andrew Neil programme that he wouldn't have him as the shadow Chancellor. OK, so you might not have him as a shadow chancellor, but, OK, there are other positions. Do you know what I mean? There are other positions, and there's probably other positions that Jeremy would want to be or do. So there are other positions in the shadow cabinet than just one. OK, but he wouldn't be in charge of the purse strings if you were in uh, government, if Yvette Cooper was okay, the Prime he Minister. he be in charge of foreign policy, and that's where his heart lies. So that would be quite a good position for Jeremy to be in, don't you think? I've no idea. Um, as far as uh, Mr Blair is concerned, should he get involved in uh, the modern Labour Party? I think... I think uh, Tony Blair was a successful leader of the Labour Party. He won three elections. He has his right to have a say like everybody else. He has one vote, the same as myself and the same as all party members and the same as people who have signed up as affiliates. They have one vote, one vote, and that's it. So he has one vote. So he can have his say. You know, I, I disagree with a lot of what he said, but I haven't heard everything that he said. But he only has one vote. That's the beauty of the system that we have. One member, one vote. Do you think the process that uh, the Labour Party has adopted for this round of adopting the leader is the right one? Um, I don't understand your question, sorry. No, no. OK, uh, let me ask you again. It's a different way of adopting a leader of the Labour Party this time to last time. Do you agree with it? Yeah, I think it's a good process. I think we're having a debate. I think we're having a, we're having a serious debate in the party. And I think it's the right thing to do because 
uh, we have to have this debate. This is, this is an internal thing for the Labour Party. We have to have this debate. debate. We have to, we've lost uh, two elections. We have to make sure that we are in place to win another election. That means that we have to have a deep-rooted debate. And that's what this is contributing to, a deep-rooted debate. So when we come out of this, we will be a stronger party. And that's the most important thing, that we come out of this united, a stronger party to take on the government and to make sure that you know we win in 2020 and we try and undo if we possibly catch some of the damage that this government is doing to our country and to people who are working these are people who are working this government is hurting the people who are working they're trying to make sure that they you know scrap any rights that they have to any legal regress to you know to a pay rise you know Osborne is acting like a magician. You know, the living wage is nine pound fifteen an hour. He's made it. He's you know made it seven pounds twenty. Effectively, a pay cut. There's a lot to be done for this government. We have to be united to do that, and that's the process that we're going through at the moment. Do you think any of the other uh, candidates should drop out ahead of the vote? No. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why would they drop out ahead of the vote? Unless, unless everybody's united around one candidate. No, the whole point is, is that we have a process. We have a, and the elimination process will come when we vote. We have a process. We have a debate. We have a discussion. If somebody feels, as one of the candidates feels, that it's time for them to drop out and put their support uh, behind another candidate, then fair enough. But it's up to the candidates to do that. This is how a political uh, democratic process should work. Okay, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Pleasure. Thank you.